So this is it, the Juvi Labbook SE. If you wonder if the newest Juvi laptop is any good and if it's worth the price tag of around 240 euros, you just hit the right spot since I will cover all of that in this review. I am Christopher, enjoy watching. The review sample was provided to me by Gearbest, a shop link is down below in the video description. So can you call the Labbook SE a successor to the Labbook Air? Well, at least judging by the design, I would say no. The Labbook SE is quite a bit thicker and doesn't look as slim. The weight got a noticeable bump to 1.434 kg as well. But to be honest, I don't think this is necessarily a downside. In fact, the new design feels sturdier and there is significantly less flex. It just gives you a very solid and high quality first impression, which I personally consider as a plus. The fact that the Labbook SE isn't made from 100% metal anymore doesn't change anything about that as well. The top case now is made from plastic, which does feel nice because it's not as cold to the touch. A bit of a premium feeling still is retained since the bottom case, which covers the bottom and sides of the laptop is still made from metal. And also, the screen chassis is made from a sturdy piece of metal. The front of the screen is covered by glass just like on the Labbook Air. The glass front is surrounded by a thin black piece of plastic that is slightly curved and makes up for a smooth transition to the metal. All ports are placed on the sides with a USB 3.0 port, a DC in jack with an LED indicator and a mini HDMI port on the left, as well as another USB 3 port, a 3.5mm headphone jack and a microSD card reader on the right. On the laptop's bottom you will find an access lid for replacing the SSD. The laptop uses a M2 SATA 3 SSD with a maximum size of 2280. The keyboard is what Juvi did an amazing job with. It's a large keyboard reaching almost the edges of the device. This enabled Juvi to use very large keys and a very comfortable layout. The keyboard even packs full-sized arrow keys with a layout your fingers can rest on easily. There also are page up, down, home and end keys which have got their very own row. And all of that is topped with a very very, very good typing feel. The key travel is comparably big and all keys have a consistent feel and resistance to them. They create a precise tactile feedback, yet don't feel too stiff. It's just a pleasure typing away on this keyboard and I found myself writing way more than just the review of this device on it. Finally, the icing on the cake is build quality. Not one single key of this beautiful thing does rattle or feel loose, even when swiping fingers across it. And that's truly impressive, considering that not even Apple manages to do that on their freaking expensive magic keyboards. There also is no bouncing or any kind of flex when hitting keys a bit harder. It's just perfect. And another thing that has been improved is readability of the labels. The black keys now have a much better contrast compared to the Labbook Air. The keyboard backlight has been improved as well. The keys are backlit much more consistent now, there is less light bleeding and there is a nice fade in and fade out effect. And finally, they have implemented two brightness levels as well. Juvi also did a great job with the touchpad. They built in a real precision touchpad that supports all of the Windows 10 gestures including their customization options. Multi-touch works just fine and moving the cursor works great as well. The precision is just fine and there is also no annoying input lag. What I personally love is that the touchpad is quite large, making it very comfortable to use. Real buttons are hidden below the touch surface, both buttons work fine and have a proper resistance in order to prevent accidental clicks. The touchpad's build quality is fine as well, there is no rattling and it fits inside the body accurately. The screen packs a 13.3 inch LCD panel with IPS technology which is fully laminated with the front glass. The panel delivers a nice picture with proper colors and a good contrast. Pictures and videos do look great on it. The viewing angles are quite good, but it isn't the best IPS panel though, since when looking at black or grey areas from steep angles, you will notice them becoming a little greyish. The screen brightness is on a sufficient level for outdoor use, but you should avoid direct sunshine, since this will make content very hard to read. The screen backlight is spread evenly, with just the borders showing some backlight bleeding, which however is only noticeable with an entirely black screen and low surrounding light, so not a big deal. 
As most of the current budget China laptops, the Labbook SE uses the Intel Celeron N4100, which is the successor of the Celeron N3450. The chipset offers 4 Goldmont Plus CPU cores at a base clock of 1.1 GHz and a turbo clock of 2.4 GHz. In addition, there is an Intel UHD Graphics 600 GPU with 12 execution units and support for native VP9 and 8-bit HEVC decoding. The chip is supported by 4 GB of DDR4L RAM, which in this case is clocked at 2133 MHz. The setup offers sufficient performance for basic office use, media consumption, surfing the web, some light development tasks and picture editing with small files. To my surprise, the Juvi Labbook SE is one of the smoothest running Celeron N4100 devices that I have tested so far. It always is interesting to see how much difference there can be between devices that on the paper offer the very same specs. In this case, I am impressed by the smoothness of the Windows user interface and also how well Chrome runs on this machine. On other N4100 devices, you often have some stutter when scrolling or opening new apps. On the Labbook SE, this does happen as well, but it doesn't happen as often, resulting in a smoother user experience. Now don't ask me for the reason, but it is how it is. And now, as with all N4100 devices, the Labbook SE is not a gaming machine. Sure, you can play some non-demanding casual games and also World of Tanks will run almost smooth on low graphic settings, but you won't be able to go any higher than that. Anything more demanding will just be unplayable. Anyone who really wants to play games should opt for a device with a more powerful processor, a dedicated GPU and to thus up the amount of cash they wanna spend. Looking inside the UEFI menu, I was pleased to see this being unlocked, so you have access to all of the advanced settings, which also allows you to squeeze out a bit more performance. To do so, go to the advanced CPU configuration, CPU power management and there disable the power limit 1 option. In addition, you can go to advanced, thermal and disable the DPTF. This will prevent the CPU from clocking down too early and allow it to consume more power, which gives you better performance. But you guess it, battery life will suffer a bit and you also get a higher temperature as you can see here. Those temps have been reached after a longer time of full load. You don't feel the heat on the outside of the laptop though. For storage, the Labbook SE uses kind of an unusual configuration since it boasts both EMMC and SSD. The EMMC storage is 32 GB in size and reaches acceptable but by no means awesome speeds, especially writing speed is pretty bad. The SSD they built in comes from 4C, which is a Chinese brand that offers 128 GB of storage. The quality of this SSD is comparably high since it offers working smart statistics and does reach decent speeds, which don't drop when writing a large amount of data. The results you see here have been reached with the SSD being 69% full. In addition, there also is a microSD slot, but as we are used to from other devices, it isn't very fast, with a maximum of 24 MB per second in both directions. Regarding the USB 3 ports, I did notice something very strange. Both ports do reach full USB 3 speeds and both ports can power a 2.5 inch external hard drive without a power supply. But the problem is that both ports don't always reach the full USB 3 speeds. Now, just as an example, when you plug in a USB 3 disk, it can happen that you either reach USB 3 or USB 2 speeds. It's just totally random. Now, if you unplug your device and replug it, you randomly get USB 3 or USB 2 again. I can repeat that as often as I want. Sometimes I get USB 2 speeds, then USB 3 speeds again. Now I don't know why this is, but I can tell for sure that it's not a driver issue and also not an issue with my SSD. And that's why I'm interested in your results. Do you have the same issue or does it work for you? Drop a comment down below. So next, let's cover software and there really isn't much to tell. The Labbook SE runs Windows 10 Home 64-bit and it's fully licensed and activated out of the box with the license key stored inside the UEFI. There is no bloodware or malicious software. Linux is basically supported, but there are some issues. The Wi-Fi module doesn't work and the touchpad isn't recognized either. Also, you can only boot Ubuntu in legacy mode. Booting UEFI mode, you will just get a black screen.
Now when you get the Labbook SE, the first thing that you should do is to reinstall Windows. The reason Chewy installs Windows 10 onto the eMMC memory instead of the SSD. Now this means that there is not enough free storage to install Windows updates. So it is necessary for you to install Windows 10 onto the SSD in order to be able to install updates which are important to keep your system secure. A download link for the drivers is down below in the video description. Network connection on the Chuvi Labbook SE happens through Wi-Fi. The laptop packs the Intel Dual Band AC3165. It reaches 201 Mbit per second next to the router, which is the maximum my internet connection can do, as well as 106 Mbit per seconds one floor below the router, which is a very decent result. Bluetooth is supported in version 4.2 and covers around 1 to 2 rooms, depending on their size and type of walls in between. Something that disappointed me are the internal speakers, since Shuvi does specifically advertise them. They are placed below the keyboard with the openings pointing towards the screen's inch. The speakers are very loud, but they do distort on high volume and also deliver no bass at all, sounding very flat. The stereo microphone is a letdown as well, too much noise and the quality is just too low. On the other hand, the 3.5mm jack works great. High volume and clear, flawless audio quality is what you get there. There also is no interference when charging the laptop and you can plug in a microphone as well. The 2 megapixel webcam is ok for basic video chats and quality doesn't degrade too much with synthetic lighting. One of the biggest strengths of the Labbook SE for sure is the battery. It packs a 38 Watt hours capacity and even with disabled power limits provided me with a battery life of 8 to 9 hours. With enabled power limits you can even reach up to 10 hours. Charging the battery from 0% to 100% takes 2.5 hours with the 12 volts to amps power supply. So here's what I think. Chuvi does decent budget laptops and the Labbook SE is another proof for that. Sure, the USB 3 bug is kind of unfortunate, as is the Windows 10 coming pre-installed on the eMMC memory, but besides of that, the Labbook SE is an impressive piece of kit considering that you can often get it from just 240 euros. Anyone looking for a cheap office slash writing slash blogging machine with a great keyboard, this is it. And with that being said, we reached the end of this review. I was Christopher, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!